Hi, I'm Lucy from So Essential and I'm here today to show you how to cover shoulder pads to give an unlined jacket that requires shoulder pads a super neat finish inside. So I'll take you through step by step how to cover them and then how to attach them inside the jacket as well with tips for allowing for movement and lots of other tips throughout. Plus I'll show you how to attach the sleeve lining at the armhole as well. So everything I talk about today is available on our lovely website and you'll find links to all the products and our website below. And if you like what you see today, please like and subscribe because every Friday I'll bring you a video packed full of sewing goodness. If you can't wait a whole week, do jump on and check out our social media accounts, which I've also linked below where we share posts daily. So let's get started with the tutorial. So I'm using a ready-made um, prim shoulder pad and again you'll find these on our website I'll pop links to these below. I have trimmed it down slightly around these edges because it was a little bit wide for me here. So this straight edge will go along the shoulder seam of the jacket and then um, this part was just protruding out past the opening of the jacket a little bit so I've just trimmed it down so it fits me better. We do do them in different sizes but I just wanted to share that you know you can do things like that to make it right for you and um, I'm using these ready-made ones and what I want to do so that these aren't unsightly is I want to cover them in the fabric of the jacket. Again, you can actually make your own shoulder pads out of um, fabric um, and then use wadding and various different things or layers of fabric, but this is just a nice easy way to do it by using these pre-made ones and then covering them in fabric. So you can see what I've done here is I've, I've allowed a little bit of a seam allowance along this edge because I've got to allow for that thickness and fullness of the shoulder pad here. So I need to allow the fabric to cover that. And then I've also added a little bit of seam allowance round there, just so that when the fabric is folded over my shoulder, um, it can fit round the shoulder pad. So all I will do there is just cover that and pin it in place like this one and then I'll stitch close to the edge round there and I'm going to finish it with a nice satin bias and that will just give me a nice shoulder pad for my unlined jacket and then there's a couple of other little things I wanted to show you as well the other one is I wanted to show you this product which acts like a sort of waistband stiffener almost. I think it's called Edge Fix. I'm going to pop links to this below as well. It's available on our website, another Visaline product. But this, I've positioned this, I marked where the hem is going to be on the fabric and I positioned the perforated um, part of the tape along where the hem will be, so where it will be folded. And then I've ironed it on because it's a fusible um, product trimmed the excess off the edge and then I'm also going to just trim these seam allowances down as well um, just to reduce some of the bulk there. I didn't put the tape on the seam allowances because obviously the last thing you want to do is add bulk there but I can just trim those down like so as well and then when I fold it back it will give me a lovely crisp sharp edge and sharp finish to the hem of the sleeve and I'm also going to put that around the hem of the actual main body of the jacket as well so that's a great little product as well that you can use and it's just these little things that can give you that extra professional finish and, and real neatness to your tailoring and dressmaking product projects. So here's my shoulder pad covered in the fabric. I'm just going to stitch this together first and then I'm going to apply my binding afterwards.
So I sewed it with a very, very narrow seam so that my binding will cover that when I apply the binding, which I'll show you now. So now I'm going to bind the edges of the shoulder pad just to give it a nice neat finish and match the facings inside the jacket. So I like to pin the binding, I've matched the raw edge of the binding with the raw edge of the fabric and then I'm going to use my quarter inch foot to just stitch that in place around the curve. I'm using needle up down on my machine as well which means that when I stop sewing the needle will stop in the down position which will just help me to manoeuvre my way around that curve. Just back tack to secure and then stitch around the curve using a quarter inch seam. Now the shoulder pads are quite thick so you might want to use just shy of a quarter inch seam or you can trim things down a little bit when you come to wrap the binding round if necessary. that's attached around the edge now and then you'll be able to just fold your binding over and then I like to pin that in place and I run the pin through where the fabric meets the binding so I can make sure it's going to catch the binding on the other side and like I said if you if you're struggling to get the binding over there you could always trim things down a little bit um, but yeah I like to just wrap it over like so and then pin the binding in place like so because I'm going to then stitch in the ditch which means stitching between the binding and the fabric like right in that join there um, I'm using a thread that matches the colour of the fabric rather than the binding which is the best way to do it um, and I can see that that will just catch that binding on the wrong side there if I pin um, along the fold, the meat, the join, sorry, where I want the stitches to go, that will just show me that that's going to work. So I'm just going to pin that in place and then stitch it and then I'll show you what I'm going to do with the straight edge because there's a clever little tip there as well. So I've pinned the binding, binding in place along that join so that I can see then on the wrong side, if I sew where the pins are along the join, I'm going to catch the fabric of the binding on the other side because that's one of the risks you run with stitching in the ditch is that you don't quite catch the fabric on the other side. So it is um, a sewing task that requires quite a lot of accuracy. Um, I'm using my clear foot to do it and I like to get into a position where I can really overlook the needle to see what I'm doing. I'm using a thread that matches the fabric rather than the binding and I'm just going to stitch all the way around that curve. I'm using needle up down on my machine so the needle will stop in the down position so I can work my way around the curve. You can get a stitch in the ditch foot for lots of machines as well. We stock loads on our website so do jump on and have a look at those and they just come with a little guide that show, sits in the join um, to help with that accuracy but just take your time go slow and personally this is a sewing task I actually really enjoy I find it very therapeutic um, so yeah I'm just going to go ahead start in that join and just back tack to secure Okay, so I've stitched in the ditch all the way around there and hopefully, yep, I've caught the fabric on the other side as you can see. 
Um, so yeah, now I'm going to repeat the process down the straight edge. However, the plan there is to leave an overhang of binding. So I'll fix the binding round the straight edge like so, overlap where the binding finishes here with this binding going along the straight side. So I'll encase that so there won't be a raw edge there. But then I'm also going to leave some long strips at either edge of the shoulder pad and stitch those together because then I can use this overhang here to create a loop and that will help to attach the shoulder pads into the jacket which is a great little tip um, for that. You can also use, if you get the little thin ribbon that comes on tops and jumpers and dresses and things in ready to wear clothes, you can snip those out and use those but I just think this is a really nice little tip. Angela gave me this one, uh, came up with this idea. So yeah, just sew the binding across that straight edge and then leave the leave a bit of overhang there and that will be useful for attaching the shoulder pad to the jacket. Okay so you can see here I've just repeated the process on the straight edge and then I've got those bits either end just to secure the shoulder pad into the jacket. The first thing to do with the sleeve lining is to attach it to the sleeve at the cuff end. So you can see here I've used some edge fix to, which has been ironed on to give me a nice sharp crease and a nice sharp fold on the cuff and I've trimmed those seam allowances down and then I've pinned the lining inside the cuff sorry inside the sleeve I've pinned the lining right sides together with the sleeve so the lining's up there but I've pinned it right sides together with the sleeve and then I'm just going to stitch with a quarter inch seam to secure those together to stitch those together so I'm just going to stitch with a quarter inch seam around this edge at the cuff to secure the lining to the actual sleeve so I'm just going to use my quarter inch foot, which I like to use for accuracy. And you can, if you've got a free arm sewing machine, you can actually sometimes slot your sleeve over the end of your free arm machine, but obviously not everybody's got one of those, so I thought I'd show you this method. So I'm just going to stitch this in place with that quarter inch seam. Okay, so that's now stitched in place with a quarter inch seam all the way around the cuff. Okay, so we now have the lining sewn in at the cuff and I've given that a good press. You always need your lining to be able to have a little pleat in it, so you wouldn't want your lining to be like that because there isn't any room for movement there. You need to make your lining so that it has got enough room once it's sewn in at the armhole at the top that there's a little horizontal pleat and there's some movement there so I've measured that and tested that and that's fine but yes I've sewn it into place at the cuff so the next bit is to sew it in at the armhole however I've got a shoulder pad to get in first so in normal circumstances in a line jacket the shoulder pad would go in and the, then the lining would go in but this is an unlined jacket and I've just chosen to line the sleeves so it's a bit of an unusual one um, it's definitely worth lining the sleeves because I can tell you that when I try the jacket on at the moment if I've got the lining pinned in place and I try it on it is so much easier to get it on in the one with the lining the silky lining than it is in the the wool fabric um so i definitely recommend doing that but it just means you just have to think a little bit about what you're going to do here with the shoulder pad but what the plan is is that first of all you fold the shoulder pad in half like so but you want the front edge of the shoulder pad to come down a little bit further than the back edge of the shoulder pad and if you remember that's because um, 
they, that sort of helps to fill the little bit of a hollow in your upper chest area and um, that's why the front of the shoulder pad is slightly longer um, but you want to fold it like so and then we're going to slip stitch the shoulder pad in place along the shoulder seam but I'm going to stop just before I get to where the armhole seam allowance is then I'll insert the sleeve lining so that into place and then afterwards I can always stitch that last little section to the lining if I want to to secure it there so I'm using a double thread so it's nice and strong and I'm just going to slip stitch that in place now So I've just taken, I've anchored the thread in the fab, main garment fabric and then with a knot and then I'm just taking it up into the shoulder pad to attach it. Working with a double thread you can get these little, uh, you do have to work the thread through sometimes if it gets a little bit tangled but I want to do that because I think it will just give it some extra strength. So. So yeah, I've gone through the main body of the fabric there and then I'm just going to go back into the shoulder pad and run it along that fold and you want to use relatively small stitches here because they will be stronger if you've got lots of little stitches rather than just a few big stitches as tempting as that might be because <laughs> it's quicker. And because this is the facing on the inside of the jacket, I haven't got to worry too much about visibility. It's not going to show anywhere on the outside of the jacket. I'm not going to be able to go through to that outside fabric. I'm just attaching it to the facing on the inside. And it's always a bit awkward to try and film these things for you. I'm trying to make it as visible as possible. But yep, so I've just gone through the main fabric there. So I'm going to go back into the shoulder pad. Okay, so that's slip stitched in place along the shoulder seam now. Obviously you can't see any stitches from the other side, but I'm just going to leave that thread intact. I've got the needle still on there, and then that's going to give me the option once I've attached my sleeve lining like so. So I will be hand sewing the sleeve lining with a slip stitch again. It will give me the option then once that's in place, if I want to, to just carry on and do that last little bit along there um, so it's secured all the way along. Okay so we've got the shoulder pad stitched, slip stitched into place along the shoulder seam and we've left that little end loose so I've got the option to go back and attach that to the seam allowances um, of the armhole afterwards and then I've also just used those little um, extra bits of length on the binding that I created. I've used those now to secure the shoulder pads in at the armhole seam. So I've allowed a little bit of play because you need a little bit of movement um, just for you know when you're wearing the jacket moving around. You don't want that to be dead tight because it could break. Um, so I've just allowed a little bit of movement on either side and I've machine stitched it into the seam allowances of the armhole just so it's really nice and secure and then I'm just going to go round and hand sew, slip stitch the lining in place all the way around the armhole and then I'm using a double thread for that just for a bit of extra strength as well because obviously it's quite a high stress area and again smaller stitches are better um, but I'm really pleased with how this is looking it looks really nice with the uh, bias band seams that I've done elsewhere on the jacket and then at the end when I've sewn the lining in place I've got the option there it's a little bit awkward but I can just move the shoulder pad back and I can just do the last few stitches to secure it there to the head of 
of the sleeve and that lining and that should be a really lovely neat finish. Okay so I'm going to go ahead and slip stitch the lining in place around the armhole now. So again just following the same process just anchoring the thread somewhere. I'm going to anchor it in the um, seam allowances of the side seam because obviously that's not going to be visible anywhere and it's a good secure point to anchor the threads and then I just want to take a little bit of the lining fabric just slide my needle along the fold of the lining fabric like so doing relatively small stitches probably need to do a little bit smaller than that perhaps and because I'm using the double thread I might have a bit of tangling again um, but it's worth it for that extra strength and then I'm just going to go back into the jacket fabric where I came out of the lining and just work my way all around the armhole just repeating that process so back into the lining fabric and then into the garment fabric just catching a few fibres of the fabric so it's not visible from the right side So I just reached the part where the binding comes out of the armhole and obviously what I don't want to do, I've left that bit of play in the binding where it's attached to the armhole so I don't then want to stitch that down too tight. So I've stopped the other side where the binding's attached, I've stopped on the first side and then I'm going to pick up where I left off on the other side so it's still got that movement there. So start again, secure my threads and start again on that other side just so I don't lose that bit of play and movement that I've created there by stitching it down too tight. So as you can see that's all neatly sewn into position now, the sleeve lining is neatly sewn into position. So as I said at the beginning what I can now do is just go back to the shoulder pad and it's a little bit awkward because I've got to get underneath there but I can pull those stitches tight that I did previously just make sure both the threads have come through and then I can just slip stitch that last little bit so it's attached to the lining so I'm just picking up where I left off I was in the fabric last time so I'm going to go back into the shoulder pad now and then back into the fabric and then I'm just going to bring it round that way so I can see 
So I'm attaching it to the right bit of lining at the right point and I'm pretty happy with that actually so I think I'll just finish it there just going to secure all of that with a knot Gonna do that again because the not the threads were tangled and I don't want to make a mess so just do that again. There we go, create a loop and put my needle through there and that's done a nice little knot for me. And if I'm not happy with how far out onto the um sleeve that comes, I can always go back in and stitch a bit more if I want to but there we go we'll get rid of that knot you can see there we've got a lovely neat inside so we've got the lined sleeve um, and then the unlined jacket but it all looks really neat I'm really happy with the finish of that um, so yeah that's the lining in the shoulder pad in um, and also the sleeve header done as well so I hope you enjoyed that. As I mentioned at the start of the video, all the products, all the tools, everything I use, the fabric, everything is detailed below. There's links below. So do jump on and check those out. If you like what you see today as well, please do like and subscribe and I'll look forward to seeing you next time.